Happy New Year's guys, the first video of 2022 and I wanted to go over why I always like to press my grinds when I pour. So this is my sink or swim theory. If you guys are new here, my name is Vincent and I'm the head roaster for Tails Coffee and if you love experimental and educational videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can get the latest updates on my newest techniques. So I'm gonna start with a demo and show you guys why I always tell you that when you pour, you look to press all the grinds down. Now, the simple way is to always have the switch in its closed position and then you just fill it with water. Honestly, like when you get to the top, you're closing in on like 280, 300 grams of water and that's all we need. So I've already got my grinds in here and we're going to just lay it out right over here. Just pour it on top. Now, in my stall of the fall techniques, I always stir the grinds, but I'm gonna show you guys what happens if you don't press the grinds down. As you guys can see, I've left it just sitting on top and the water is going to be clear. Now what happens is essentially, what happens is when the grinds float to the top, the grinds are being opened up. So the flavors are ready to release. But if it doesn't go down or if you never push it down, the flavors will never enter the finished product. And what you're gonna get is you're gonna get a lot of clear liquids. Now, I could talk for the next five minutes and this would still be clear and it's because none of the grinds are really floating down. The only time it turns a little bit more brown is when some of these smaller particles actually start to sink. But this could take on forever and ever and ever. And as the top quote unquote blooms or absorbs water, you'll see nothing goes down. So when we pour, we always look to make sure we fully saturate all the grinds and the sig and what actually signifies it is when all the grinds have sank. This is what it means for me to press the grinds down or to sink. While the swimming part is for all of the coffees in the middle to be brewing. And it's because we still need a bit more time during a pour over to let all the flavors absorb. In the switch, obviously, if I let it sit on top forever, it could literally just be brewing forever and we'll guaranteed a very high extraction. But in a normal pour over where you're using a V60, you want to make sure you're brewing in a way where you let it sit in the middle for long enough, but you're making sure the grinds are being pressed down. Now, I'm going to show you, once you start agitating this, this thing will start to sink and that's when all the colors really start to come. But if I don't do that, it'll never sink. So the question then is, what happens when you don't press the grinds down? So I'm gonna show you guys in this demo, what happens when you don't press the grinds down properly? And it's whether through the pouring technique or through without stirring, I'm gonna show you what happens when you don't agitate enough and the crust kind of just falls to the side. So here we have it set up. I've got my wet filter. I've got my grinds in here. Um, I'm gonna show you guys what happens when you don't agitate it a lot and you just pour and leave the crust kind of sitting on top. And I'm just gonna do a center pour. This is actually the quickest way to get the water in and it's the quickest way for you to drain a coffee. So for those of you that have clogging issues, you can always do a center pour, but only with caution. So as I pour, you guys can see all the darkers are just surfacing. There's a lot of stuff that kind of goes on the sides and a lot of new stuff is kind of going up the middle. We used 20 grams of beans in here. So we're aiming for 300 grams of water in total. So here we've hit 300. You can see that there's still quite a bit of the darker grinds floating on top. That's the crust we were talking about earlier. So when I brew, I always look to press all the grinds down and you're about to see why. You can notice that there's already a lot of grinds on the top. This is why I always do flushes. So flushes when, it's, when I pour around the edges to push all the grinds down. And as we go down, you can just see that the walls are extremely thick. And this is, obviously this is an extreme case, but sometimes when you have darker grinds floating at the top, this is exactly what happens. We're gonna have grinds that stick to the walls and grinds that don't have, that have a lot of flavor in them, but aren't being fully extracted from. So you don't wanna see any of the grinds kind of on the side of the walls. Um, and so that's why it's easiest to notice that by pressing the grinds down. So we're gonna just show you guys quickly uh, what the 
grinds really look like. You can see it's super thick on the sides, it's super thick on the edges. That's a lot of flavor that has yet to go into our cup of coffee. Color doesn't determine everything. This is still a decently colored coffee, but I assure you we're missing a lot of flavors that we could have been extracting out from the grind. So let's get back on the other side and talk about what we can do to fix this issue. So as you guys could see, there was a lot of high and dry grounds. Now the high and dry grounds, like I was explaining, carries a lot of flavor that is ready to be extracted, but because it doesn't have a chance for the water to properly pass through and pull every flavor out, we're having a little problem here. It's stuck to the wall. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna now think about ways we can actually get the grinds into the middle. And this is why I focus on having a flush at the end. Pouring down the edges helps me pull all the grinds that are sitting at the top on the edges to flow back into the middle of the pot. Now, a lot of you guys are gonna be like, hey Vince, you know, doing a flush is gonna cause a lot of side channeling and the water's gonna run down the sides. No, it's not guys. No matter what you do, it's gonna go back into the middle. There's enough water resistance on the sides for it to push it back in. At least that's what I think and I have yet to be proven otherwise. So another thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about pressing the grinds. So pressing the grinds is really the main key factor. Um, when I pour, I look to pour and push all the grinds down with the pouring technique alone. Certain coffees, like darker coffees that are gassier, they tend to have more floaters. So more darker grinds float throughout their brew. And so sometimes waiting and pouring only in the middle to work out to the edges is not enough agitation. What you have to do is you have to work to the edges and then work back into the middle. And that really depends on how much gas and how fast, how slow, how high you're pouring. So this is an entirely different level of judgment that you guys are gonna have to figure out on your own. But for my pouring technique, for some of the darker coffees or more gassier coffees, I always just work out to the edge relatively quickly, you know, and then work back into the middle. Now, the other thing we have to keep in mind is how fast our first drip is. I've talked about this a lot, but when we pour, we're gonna make sure that we need to start slow so that we don't have a long first drip. We want to have everything brewed nice in the middle, kind of floating in the middle. That's the key important time for all the flavors to be extracted. So when we pour, we look to press all the grinds down. So this is my sink or swim theory. Swimming is when it's at the top, sinking is when we press it down. I always make sure all my coffee grinds have sank. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this technique. Do you apply it to your brewing techniques? Like it's not always the easiest thing to always just check for how to sink the grinds, right? Some of the lighter coffees, they naturally sink very quickly. So you don't need to work your way out. You just pour slower from the middle. And honestly, some coffees are so light, you can actually just stay in the middle and everything will just naturally sink on its own because all the water is just gonna pull all the grinds in. Sometimes that's enough agitation. And giving a quick stir is all you need. The stirring at the end helps us really get rid of those last larger micro, like, like larger grinds that actually just stay afloat. Larger grind sizes tend to float a little bit longer, it takes a little bit more time to extract everything out of there. That's why we tend to bloom with larger grind coffees. And this is why I use finer grinds and it's because we don't have this kind of sinking or the swimming issue. Hotter water also helps you extract faster and therefore it sinks a little bit faster. It also causes the grinds to rise a little bit faster and have more flatter and flavorless coffees dripping out in the beginning. So this now turns into a, a complicated balance between how water temperature and how pouring speed really matters and how we just move. So I want you guys to kind of think about how you apply the sink or swim theory into what you're currently brewing and how, and see how you can figure out how to maximize it. You want your water to drain at the same rate all your grinds sink. I've said it before and it's because I think once it sank, we don't have much flavor coming back out. So you want the water to kind of just go down with the, with the grinds and it hits the bottom together. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And uh, that's a great start to the year and bye guys.